book bans are making a comeback, but with a new twist. Parents, right-wing activists, and lawmakers across the United States are fighting over books about race, gender, and sexuality at a pace experts say they have not seen in decades. While banning books is not new in American schools, the tactics and the politicization are. In one of the latest efforts, a Tennessee school board voted unanimously to remove the Pulitzer-winning graphic novel Mouse due to concerns about using curse words and nudity in its depictions of the Holocaust. It's not just about Jews, this is about othering. And what's going on now is about controlling, controlling what kids can look at, what kids can read, what kids can see in a way that makes them less able to think, not more. We've it's seen a rise uh, in the last decade or so, challenging books dealing with diversity and the identity of marginalized groups like LGBTQ people. In fact, if you look at our most challenged book lists for the last five years, you'll see that the majority of books that reach the top of the list deal with the LGBTQIA experience. The one shift we did see was in 2020 following the murder of George Floyd when we suddenly saw a greater awareness of racism and its impact on American society. And at the same time as uh, libraries and schools were making more information available through books about those issues to students, we saw uh, a rising number of challenges to books dealing with race and racism, targeting books like the 1619 Project, uh, Dr. Ibram Kendi's books like How to Be an Anti-Racist. Book challenges have always reflected the conversations we're having in society at the moment. The American Library Association said in a preliminary report that it received an unprecedented 330 reports of book challenges since last fall. Such challenges have long been a staple of school board meetings, but it isn't just the frequency that has changed. Conservative groups are now using tactics to push book bans into state houses and law enforcement. Woke baby, genderqueer, this is where they then start messing with issues of sexuality. Not my idea, where they literally have said that whiteness is a deal with the devil. Wow. And so what you have is whiteness is a bad deal. We've actually seen librarians be the target of criminal complaints, arguing that by supplying books to young adults about um, gay and transgender persons, nonfiction books dealing with human reproduction and sexuality, um, that somehow they were pandering obscenity to minors. And we're actually seeing legislation introduced that would make uh, librarians and educators vulnerable to criminal charges and lawsuits. Um, uh, we're seeing legislation that would ban any consideration of gender or sexual identity in K through 12 schools in certain states. Far-right politicians have also seized on the controversies over books. The newly elected Republican governor of Virginia, Glenn Youngkin, rallied his supporters by framing book bans as an issue of parental control and highlighted the issue in a campaign ad. When my son showed me his reading assignment, my heart sunk. It was some of the most explicit material you can imagine. And in Texas, Governor Greg Abbott decried pornographic or obscene material in school libraries to target books by LGBTQ authors. It's truly frightening when we have elected officials who have sworn to uphold the Constitution, advocating for censorship as a tool uh, to suppress ideas and viewpoints, which is absolutely forbidden under the First Amendment for any government agency. It's the mark of authoritarian governments to tell people what to think and what to read. And no matter how much you cloak it in the idea that we're protecting young people, what are you protecting them from? The fact that history is is difficult and messy and not the founders of our country were imperfect human beings who said one thing and did another. I think that that's just human nature and talking about that and dealing with that can only increase respect for the democracy that we've managed to forge out of all that mess. 
critics argue that prohibiting these books altogether violates the rights of other parents and children who believe access to them is important. What we say is no one family, no one parent should dictate what books are available to the rest of the community or the other students in the school. We're seeing individual parents with a particular set of values around politics and morality trying to dictate for the entire community what is uh, acceptable discourse, what is acceptable curriculum, and what's acceptable reading. And while they certainly have a right to guide their own child in, in, that, in that way, they shouldn't be able to limit what's available to other young people. And given our past is riddled with discrimination and suppression, the loss of rights by individuals, and certainly not understanding how our democracy came to be, uh, the compromises that went into that, and how we moved beyond those compromises to ensure that everyone enjoyed equality under the law and how hard it is to maintain that for everyone, including those who belong to marginalized communities. We don't learn from our mistakes. We'll never progress forward. We'll never have the kind of creative thinking, critical thinking that feeds into innovation and improvements in our society. Mm -hmm.